Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, allow me to offer you a very warm welcome at the Fourth Astana Economic Forum. Thanks to the vision of President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, this forum has become a platform for cutting edge discussion about the economic forces that are shaping our lives and societies. The upheaval caused by the great financial and economic crisis has not spared the economics profession. Standard models have failed and commonly accepted paradigms are no longer seen as fit for purpose. Clearly, these turbulent times present a whole series of challenges for economists as well as policymakers. This forum, which connects a truly global network of experts, private businesses, and international agencies is helping us all to stay ahead of curve. There is much to discuss over the next two days. The political turmoil and conflicts in the Middle East and North Africa have destabilized financial markets, caused a spike in oil prices and cast a dark cloud of uncertainty over the global economy. Food prices are vol volatile and have risen sharply for the second time in three years threatening a new global food crisis and putting large numbers of people at risk. Sovereign balances sheets in advanced economies remain under stress and credit spreads have widened, particularly in the Eurozone. Capital flows have turned to highly gross economies, but they are volatile and they're complicated by rising inflation. Whilst we can say that the global recovery is proceeding, there are substantial downsized risk that policymakers might, must be vigilant and proactive to guard against. When we gathered here last year, I laid out the government's records in combating the crisis and our medium-term strategic plans for post-crisis development. Today, I would like to focus my remarks on a subject that is more fundamental. Looking into the post-crisis era, one of the most basic yet critical challenges that we face is providing our citizens with decent economic opportunities and reducing inequality in our society. The crisis has put pressure on living standards around the world. According to the IMF, 30 million people have lost their jobs with around 200 million people currently looking for work. This has taken a heavily toll on society at large. Nowhere is this more evident than in the Middle East and North Africa, where declining living standards and a lack of genuine opportunity, particularly for young people, have fueled political tensions and unrest. In Kazakhstan, we are no stranger to the challenge of creating opportunities. This year, we will celebrate 20 years of independence. When the first emerged from the Soviet Union, our economy lay in ruins. There was no private sector, inflation was rampant, and we struggled to provide even basic public services. However, thanks to the president's bold economic reforms and leadership, the picture today is very different. Nominal GDP per capita has risen more than 12 times to reach over 9,000 US dollars. Unemployment has fallen by more than half, and we have made major improvements to public services and infrastructure. The World Bank now classifies Kazakhstan as a middle-income nation. We have made significant progress, but we have much more progress to make. First, we must ensure opportunities are shared broadly by narrowing development gaps around the country. Here we are placing particular emphasis on skills and infrastructure. In the last three years, 46 new technical or vocational schools have been built around the country. And last week, I announced the creation of CASIPCOR, a new management company focused on improving the quality of technical education and training. We are also investing heavily in regional infrastructure to improve transportation networks, public utilities, and housing. 
In addition, we are providing substantial support to the agriculture sector to improve productivity and stimulate development of downstream industries such as the food processing. This will create jobs and new sources of income in the rural areas of the country. Thus, by the middle of this decade, we expect a 25% reduction in the number of people living in poverty and an unemployment rate that does not exist 5.5%. Second, we must ensure that opportunities are sustainable over the long run by building local capacities. If Kazakhstan is to avoid the middle income trap and enter the ranks of fully industrialized nation, we cannot simply produce more of our existing products. We will need to produce new and more value-added goods. Of course, international competition is rather sharp and the challenges is great, but that is why innovation is so important. Creating quality, sustainable jobs is the direct result of being internationally competitive. For Kazakhstan, this requires the strategic diversification of our productive capabilities. This, in turn, requires providing workers with a quality education and health care, good on-the-job training and supportive infrastructure. Here, we are making major investment to increase access to education and improve its overall quality. We have opened the doors to Nazarbayev University, a world-class institution here in Astana, and a series of high-quality intellectual schools around the country. We are introducing a unified national health system and improving health outcomes by raising standards of primary health care. These are the building blocks for a productive and competitive workforce. Of course, however, it will be the private sector that invests this human capital into profitable new businesses and industries. That is why we continue working hard to improve the investment environment, cut red tape, and strengthen private property right in the rule of law. Further, the government's accelerated industrial and innovative development program combines efforts of the state and private sector to encourage domestic value-added production. Ladies and gentlemen, our challenge over the next decade is not simply to deliver job-creating growth. It is to ensure that growth is sustainable and then the fruits of opportunity are shared widely across society. Without this, long-run stability and prosperity will place at risk. Thank you very much for your attention.